Good evening. Welcome to St. John this evening. It is the Feast of the Holy Cross, which if you uh, tuned in this morning or later in the day, you know that uh, it's kind of a, I want to say a little controversial as to the retention of the feast because its origins are a little dubious, um, but I think it is still appropriate for us as most, most Lutherans have retained the feast to remember um, what our Lord Jesus Christ gives to us from his cross. Let's stand and begin our service, Divine Service Setting 3, page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The intro, it is printed on your insert. We'll read it half verse by half verse. The Lord has made known his salvation. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. Continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, 
Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross that he might bear the sins of the world and draw all people to himself. Grant that we who glory in his death for our redemption may faithfully heed his call to bear the cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Holy Cross Day is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So, Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm is psalm number 40, verses 1 through 11. Again, half verse by half verse. I waited patiently for the Lord. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Blessed is the man who makes the tr- Lord his trust. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open ear. Then I said, Behold, I have come. I desire to do your will, O my God. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Epistle is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will, I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled? And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess together by the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, made of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of the light. Very God of the very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things. 
may be seated. The hymn of the day is Sing My Tongue, The Glorious Battle, hymn 454. Sing my high tongue, the glorious battle, sing the ending of the fray. Now above the cross, the trophy, sound the loud triumphant lay. Tell how Christ the world's Redeemer has a victim won. The day. In the morning, when you get up, make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So if the small catechism is anything to go by, every day is Holy Cross Day. 
And if not, why not? There's pious Helena, Constantine's mother, and her finding of the true cross. At the time of Luther, there was the elector Frederick, who had his own little piece of the cross. And as Luther reminds us, there's so many that, well, the cross would be extraordinarily large. And he does, Prince Frederick, Elector Frederick, I should say, Luther's elector, he commemorated that day in 1517. Well, maybe you thought that we Lutherans have gotten rid of all that kind of superstitious stuff, making the sign of the cross, waving your hand around. What kind of good could that do? It's just an external, physical, and certainly not very spiritual thing to do, and really, what does it even mean in and of itself? Well, how spiritual and how physical was your getting up this morning? <laughs> Could you check in to the Lord, with the Lord in prayer before you had all your spiritual capacities lined up? And when did you have them all quite lined up? Everything was just right to pray. What about your f- physical body? What part of you did you do your praying with? Your hands, on your knees, your mouth, or your brain? You can pray without hands, without knees, without a mouth, but not without your brain, you think. That has to be the thing doing the praying, working, and concentrating. Well then, what happens when you start to think about something else when you're about your prayers? Does that make them not count at all? This is actually an ancient heresy. It's the Apollinarians who thought that prayer had to be in the mind. It was actually thought that was the most connected with God. You will have observed so far that all of the talk about prayer has been really about yourself. But no prayer starts with you. Prayer, first and foremost, is calling upon the name of the Lord. And if he hadn't given you his name to call upon, then your prayer would indeed be nothing but talk about yourself and a God who you've projected out to suit your wishes and a God who only is as good as he's delivering upon all those wishes. And you keep going with your prayers only as long as, well, he keeps giving you what you asked for. That's how most people pray. They treat him like a genie in a bottle, and it's awesomely religious if you're into that sort of thing. But you've been set free from it. Because God has put his name on you in the water of your baptism. And if as an infant, how many of your spiritual capacities were there when you were baptized? How alert were you to what God was doing to you? Probably not at all. Just name and water, that's baptism. But name is there as it's spoken. And it is only spoken if there's a mouth there to speak it. And a hand there to do some watering of you along with the name. It's all very physical, actually, baptism. Words and water, as the large catechism confesses. We see a man speaking and doing. But what he is speaking and doing is in the name of the Lord. And what is in the Lord's name is the Lord's own speaking and doing by the mouth and hands that he has put there as his instrument for his use, for his speaking and his doing. And so of that, there can be no doubt that when he is speaking and doing, the wording and watering are actually being done, being spoken and done as mandated by the Lord. Baptism is as physical as it is spiritual. Most of us don't remember our baptism, though, and yet as baptized, the Lord has made us his own, brought us to life as his own. Not just back then, that life he thus has given is given to the whole of you. And it's not limited to a place or a time. There's never a place and time where you are not a baptized child of God. Each day, then, lived one day at a time as baptized children. So, when the catechism said, when you get up each day, make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, 
daily, says the small catechism, our baptism is to have its way with us, to repent us, to forgive us, to enliven the way in us. And that's why the small catechism instructs us to begin each day as those whom the Lord has baptized, for us then to live each day in the confidence and with the resources that God has given us by that baptism. It's really actually a hazardous thing to try to do, to try to live your day not as if you were baptized. What the Lord does is for sure. There isn't actually much else in this world that, is, that can give us that kind of confidence. When he baptized you, he did it in a way that left no doubt that it was he that was doing the baptizing and that you are the one he baptized. Now, it is a bit difficult to get all of that running through your head in your brain first thing in the morning. All the goodness that is yours by that giving of baptism. So probably your brain's not quite checked in, even if you join me live in the congregation of prayer at 9 a.m. I'm never quite there yet either. But your hand may do with its calling on the name of the Lord too, which may pull the mouth into saying it, all of which is evoked by having given you his name. So it's never really a dead thing brought to life by us when we check in. Whatever it is, it is the doing itself, doing himself, whose name it is and whose name he is the doer of. It's God who gave you the name and it's God who's putting that name upon your lips and even taking your hand to make that sign of the cross to remember the gift of baptism that he gave you. So maybe think of it this way when you're beginning your prayers. Dear Lord, please be doing your name with me today. And that the whole of you, none of you is left out of where his name is and where his name is doing. And so where that is is located by the sign of the Holy Cross. This is why Luther retained that practice for us. The sign of the cross is a cipher or a symbol of the name that was put on you in your baptism. That's why when you're baptized, that sign is put upon your forehead and your heart. There are some accounts, early accounts, in the history of the Christian church at baptism where they attempted actually to write the whole name of God inscribed on the person being baptized. Some churches still retain the practice of the baptized receiving it actually as a tattoo upon their skin, that sign of the Holy Cross. But Jesus would be enough, actually, just to say in the name of Jesus. And if not the whole name, then simply the mark and his name, Savior. The Lord God is put on you, his name. And it is confessed by that sign of the cross. Making the sign of the cross upon yourself is then nothing less than just simply saying, I am the baptized, and Lord, you have put your name on me. You have named me as one of your own. You did that in the water of baptism. And there it's all remembered, even simply with your hand, even without words, in the sign of the cross. So the small catechism put first things first. And after that, something more. But all three steps don't have to be at once. There's space available, as hinted at. But best that you do all three, even, not, even if not all at once, to get up, make the sign of the cross, and say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And that will get you through your day. Because where God has put his name, there he has promised to work. Good and gracious gifts for you. You wouldn't think of the rest of your day in little pieces that you would break up either. And anytime you forget one part, then there's a place for, well, for temptation to have its way with you. So remember your baptism. Make the sign of the cross that the Lord made upon you there. Remember his name that he placed upon you and say it out loud. And that way, you'll never forget who you are in Christ Jesus and the gift that he purchased and won for you by his cross. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. May God grant it in his holy name. Amen. Stand.
going to try to play the note, but my pitch pipe is not working. I think it's time for a new one. All right, that pitch is gone. We'll guess. <laughs> Create in me a clean Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son has triumphed by his cross. Give grace to your Church to proclaim his victory throughout the world, the victory of that love which hate could not destroy and that life which death could not overcome. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious Lord, we praise you for retaining among us your holy word and sacraments. Continue to raise up faithful stewards of your mysteries, that repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Christ's name would be proclaimed in our midst and throughout all the world. Prepare all your baptized children to be faithful confessors of the hope that is in them. Lord, in your mercy, Lover of mankind, bind our families together in perfect harmony and rule our hearts with the peace of Christ. Cause his word to dwell richly among us and let fathers and heads of household teach and admonish their families in all wisdom. Let our songs, our words, and deeds be done in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, grant health and wisdom to those in authority that they may carry out their duties according to your will. Enable them to protect us from violence and evil and to maintain peace and righteousness. Let our land be filled with citizens who love you with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and who love their neighbors as, their, as themselves. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have shown us your mercy in your Son, Jesus Christ, who became our good Samaritan to save us from all evil and death. Give compassionate hearts that we may not be, be blind to the needs of others, but show mercy to all and love. Bind up our wounds and send us forth to bind up the wounds of others with the healing balm of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. At your invitation, O Father, we come to your supper for rest. Preserve us from impenitence and unbelief, Cleanse us from our unrighteousness and close, uh, clothe us with the righteousness purchased with your Son's blood. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant to those who mourn comfort in their grief and grace to rejoice in the reunion to come with those who have died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. These things and whatsoever other things you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who reign, lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord 
who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.